Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to study Indian economics. Uh, and this will be applicable to the students uh, who are doing their undergraduate in economics or postgraduate in economics and also the people who are preparing for civil service and in which uh, we need the Indian economics as a paper or uh, for general studies also we need the, the knowledge on Indian economy. Uh, most of the time, you know, many people find Indian economy as a very difficult subject or as a boring subject. And I know that many students, particularly the economics to undergraduate students and postgraduate students, uh, tell that Indian economy is a very boring subject. And uh, why? The first reason they give is that it is full of lot of numbers. And uh, students find it very difficult uh, to memorize the numbers and that's why they say that in any economics is all good. And uh, I would probably you know, uh, blame you know, partly to, uh, the, to the, the way uh, in any economics is taught at many places, similarly the textbooks that people refer to. So that could be the reason why in any economics uh, sounds uh, boring to some people or even large number of people, uh, the students as well as the people who are preparing for civil service. But to me, the Indian economics has been always uh, an interesting subject. Uh, why I'm saying this? That would be probably the teacher who taught me Indian economics during my undergraduate was one of the best teachers, and he taught Indian economics with a lot of passion. And uh, so I also enjoyed uh, studying Indian economics, uh, and I enjoyed Indian economics very much. Uh, and it also so happened that uh, when I appeared for my MPhil interview at Center for Development Studies. Uh, and when asked uh, the most preferred subject, of course, I had told the first one as microeconomics, but then the second one I said uh, it is Indian economy. So uh, let me tell you like, why uh, Indian economy sounds good. Of course, I have told you that since uh, many people use a lot of numbers to understand Indian economy, it sounds quite boring. But how to make Indian economy quite interesting? Let me give you some tips. No, Indian economics, you no, know, compared to you no know, many other subjects, it is a very applied subject, and it you know, it deals with uh, the current uh, incidents, uh, events uh, in the Indian economy. Of course, it also talks about the past or what economic policies were undertaken, what was the impact of those policies on the Indian economy. So that is why it, it is very interesting subject. But somehow many people do not enjoy this subject. So now, how to enjoy this subject? I would first uh, say that uh, uh, you don't have to always give so much emphasis upon remembering the numbers. So particularly when you are starting uh, to study the Indian economics, uh, you do not have to really necessarily uh, remember the numbers or log up the numbers uh, to you know, do good in the Indian economy. So initially you can uh, only remember the trends and patterns of the Indian economy. Like whether, you know, say for example, you, know, you have to visualize in your mind uh, when we say Indian economy, say what are the components of the Indian economy, how big is Indian economy, say for example, when we are talking about the GDP of India and how big is the uh, GDP. And I think you should uh, remember these numbers because that will give you some idea uh, that what is the size of uh, our Indian economy. Similar when you talk about the growth, uh, see this growth will be um, uh, still based on these numbers because if uh, suppose our Indian economy is about $3 trillion and uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi has been talking about achieving a $5 trillion economy. So we need to visualize this number. Okay, so our Indian economy is about $3 trillion US dollar uh, at present and we are uh, aiming at uh, achieving a $5 trillion economy. Similarly, suppose you are, if you are thinking about your own state, suppose it is Odisha, uh, then you should also visualize what is the size of uh, Odisha's GST. Thing. So, uh, of course, you should be clear about the concept, but okay, so should, first of all, you should visualize uh, the economy, like how big is our Indian economy. Then you should understand the different sectors, uh, basically agriculture sector, industry sector, and tertiary sector. And then within industry, uh, sorry, within the agriculture, no, primary sector, we have agriculture, allied activities, uh, similarly we have mining and quarrying activities, we have fishing, forestry, all these things are coming in the primary sector. Similarly, you can see what is the contribution of which sector 
no, roughly, no, you don't have to remember exact number like which or whatever the person has said. If you are remembering, that is all well and good, but if you do not remember, first you visualize what is the approximate share of these sectors. Then comes uh, the secondary sector, which includes the manufacturing, which in, also includes construction, then electricity, water supply, okay, uh, all those gas, and these things are coming under the secondary sector. Now it comes under, uh, no, in the tertiary sector, we have all the services, you know, starting from hotel, uh, then we have tourism, then we have uh, public uh, uh, administration, we have defense, uh, you know, we have uh, banking services, we have IT services. So all the services are now coming under the tertiary sector. So first we should visualize it. So uh, this is our GDP, then within this, these are the sectors. And uh, now when we are studying in Indian economy, now we basically study different aspects of this uh, no, uh, components. Uh, so now we have to understand, uh, say for example, you, know, you can uh, uh, study some good books and you can understand like what was the pattern of growth in India after independence. Now at, what is the current rate of economic growth? So you, know, you should have a comparative idea in your mind and uh, then uh, no, it will be easy to understand. So, uh, so the first point that I would emphasize is that uh, when we are you know, starting to uh, study Indian economy, uh, do not give too much importance on uh, remembering the numbers. So this year that was the growth rate, this year this is the growth rate, so that will become too much of numbers and then we will simply go crazy. But you can, uh, know, uh, you can remember the trends and patterns like story. Uh, similarly, when we talk about agriculture, you know, we will start with uh, like what are the situation of agriculture just after independence. Then we had uh, no, our uh, green revolution and then what was the impact of the green revolution, how it increased the productivity, how it impacted the soil, uh, no, how we started using a lot of chemical fertilizer, chemical pesticides and how we had to buy a lot of hybrid uh, high yielding varieties and so we had higher productivity, we became sufficient in food production, we did not have to import a lot of food items that we used to do. So, no, and what is the current scenario? Now we are talking about again organic farming, how to reduce the uh, use of chemical fertilizer and chemical pesticides. Similarly, coming to India, uh, uh, so coming to the uh, industry sector, we can also uh, look at uh, uh, say the organized manufacturing and then uh, registered and the unregistered manufacturing sector. Then what has been the trend of uh, industry sector, like what are the share of industry in our total GDP when India got independence, how now the uh, share of industrial output has increased uh, over time period, then similarly talk about the productivity debates, those are involved you know, in, in Indian economy. Then comes the tertiary sector. Uh, basically, you know, if you remember the cogent hypothesis, you know, we always believe that um, the, uh, the transition should have happened, and uh, start agriculture has should have higher share in the GDP and then it, the, it should move towards uh, uh, the secondary sector or manufacturing sector and then gradually the service sector's uh, contribution should be high. But in India it is not the case. Uh, initially we had higher share of agriculture, then we have directly moved towards service sector and uh, so now service sector has the highest contribution in India's GDP and then now we are observing that manufacturing sector's contribution to GDP is now increasing. So that's why no, you can always remember the story, you know, the trends and patterns of different sectors, you know, just like a story. And uh, to make it more interesting, we should read the newspaper regularly. You know, because in different newspapers, say for example, if you are studying, uh, say, in uh, Economic Times, if you are studying uh, Hindu, you know, on different days, we get different, uh, you know, so different newspapers have different. Uh, 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 editions so on specific days they give a lot of uh, uh, analysis on the Indian economy. So when we read those uh, 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 articles in newspaper, we find that the writers use very few numbers and then they use the trends and patterns and uh, we really enjoy those articles. So uh, of course, gradually you will start remembering sm some, sm some numbers and you can have comparative pictures. But initially you do not, do not have to worry about uh, the numbers you know, uh, when, you, when you study in an economy. Emphasis upon the trends and patterns. So uh, remember uh, the trends and patterns like a story and they read all those newspapers. Similarly, you know, if you want to stay updated with the debates uh, on the Indian economy, 
in which secular part debates are happening. Then you can always uh, know, uh, read uh, some other uh, more than newspaper. Or newspaper gives a lot of updated information about the debates. You can also uh, go through the economic and political weekly, and, uh, and it is available online. And the current issue is free. Similarly, you can subscribe uh, Yojana and Kurketra because there you find a lot of you know, very well written articles on uh, on the Indian economy on different sectors, what all reforms that happened. People give historical perspective. So you know, that's how I think Indian economy can become very interesting. So if, and for that reason, again, you have to stay updated with uh, the new channels. So watch news every day and so that you remain updated. What are new economic policies that have come up? And how it is going to impact? So look at the debates and discussions that happens in Rajasthan Lok Sabha channels. So I think you know. So this this will be uh, the easiest way to uh, to uh, to handle Indian economy issues. And once you get comfortable with uh, uh, the subject, uh, you know, you can focus on uh, remembering the numbers, and uh, you will start loving the numbers. And uh, yeah, it it will say finally that oh, Indian economics is so interesting. Thank you so much.